Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Vrice and today we're looking at making custom brushes in ZBrush Core. Um, so you may have noticed by now that uh, in ZBrush Core you cannot use um, custom brushes uh, made from ZBrush. But that doesn't mean that you can't use custom brushes. Uh, that is something that was brought up to me uh, by someone on the uh, ZBrush forums. And I looked into it and yes, you can definitely make your own brushes and save them uh, to use. If you make a brush inside of ZBrush Core, you can use it again inside of ZBrush Core. And you can save it to your startup folder and have it there when you need to. So we're gonna have a quick look on how to make custom brushes uh, for uh, ZBrush Core. So to start up, we're gonna make a very simple brush. I'm going to subdivide this a couple of times, like so. So we have enough geometry to sculpt. And so now we're going to make a very basic brush. So to do so, we are going to start in the, uh, we're going to use the standard brush as our uh, startup point. And then we are going to go into alpha and click import. And we are going to import an alpha. And I already imported all my alphas for this tutorial, so I will not be looking at them. But here, this is an alpha. So an alpha is a black and white image, like gray with gray values. Uh, it's a black and white image, uh, no colors, that um, shows you height information, essentially. So black is uh, flat and white well, black would be lower, uh, white would be higher. So everything that is white will be pulled away, will be pulled towards you, and what is black would be uh, flat. So this is, uh, you can make alphas in uh, any uh, 3D software, or you can make alphas in Photoshop. Any black and white image will essentially become an alpha. This alpha comes from the uh, ZBrush uh, download center and it's a button. So imagine if um, you're making a character and you have um, pieces like this button that you need to put all over uh, your character or you might use it again for another character to make them uh, mesh in the same universe that they would all wear the same buttons. Well. Um, making a custom brush is a great use of this. Um, well, using custom brush is a great idea for this. So um, now that we have our alpha, if we sculpt, you can see that we uh, can sculpt with our imported alpha. So if you go under the alpha palette, you can't see the uh, import button, but it is there under the alpha menu on the top. So you can import uh, custom alphas if you need to. And now just sculpting won't work. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the drag dot. That way we can position our button exactly where we need to. And we can see that the effect is a bit too uh, subtle. So we are going to cancel that. We're going to bump the intensity to 40. And that's not too bad. 50, yeah, 50 is too much. So 40, 40 is not bad too. Like so. Okay, increase the size so we can have a better view. And just like that, you can lay down all your buttons exactly where you need to. Um, this uh, alpha has um, a fall off, a circular fall off built in, but sometimes it's always nice to remove the focal shift to have the, um, when you're laying down details like this, it's nice to remove the focal shift a bit Maybe not too much. Like so. So you're sure to have a, a very clean edge. But if you can, if you remove all of it, 
you can see, I'm not sure if you can tell there. Yeah, see there, there's a bit of artifacting that appears on the edges. So leaving a bit of fall off inside helps clean that up. So yeah, essentially now you've made a brush to lay down your model and you want to use that brush again. Well now under brush, you can click save as and save it, give it a name and save it. And you will be able to then go to brush and load brush and uh, load it up again. Uh, but if you save it to your uh, Z startup folder, uh, ZBrush presets, it will be available to you. I've already done that in a previous session. So here I saved it to my Z startup folder, ZBrush presets fo folder. So now it appears every time I launch the um, ZBrush core, it will be available to me. So you can make all the brushes you need. Any any brush you will be using a bunch of times. It's a good idea to save all your presets and save them and then just load them up. Load them up. Speaking is hard. Um, load them up at every time you launch a ZBrush Core. So this is a very simple uh, case. Um, if you wanted to make, um, if you wanted to tweak uh, using, um, for instance, if you had this uh, Damien standard brush and you made your, your cuts like so, but you wanted to have a sharp cut and uh, all these alphas. So you add this alpha, but you don't like the way it's shaped. Uh, I made another one that is pretty similar, but it's a bit sharper. I made this. This is just um, a height map I made uh, inside of um, 3ds Max. So I model a simple shape and I made a height map. And you can do that in any uh, any software you want. You can do that in Photoshop. You can just redo this image inside of Photoshop. And now we can make sharper cuts. So if you needed to make, if you like the, uh, the sharp, um, the sharp carving um, option that uh, Diamond Standard Brush gives you, but you want it to have a specific cut a specific shape so you could make your own make your own alpha and then you can use it to make cuts dents uh, if you wanted to uh, sculpt some cr uh, stylized cracks in the walls uh, so yeah, you can make your alpha and then use it to modify an existing brush and then save that preset. And that gives you uh, more flexibility to have variants of a single brush as well. So you can make new brushes or you can save alternates. And if you save your um, if you save your Damien standard brush here with this alpha, if you save it, it will save the alpha as well. So every start, every time it starts, it will load up that alpha. So if you need to make variants of an existing brush and you want to save those settings, you can do as you can use custom brushes for that as well. And now we're going to go and have a look at making a more uh, utilitarian brush. So imagine uh, this is a piece of metal and uh, you want it to be forged and you want to uh, sculpt in um, the, um, 
where the hammer hit the metal. So you could use the hard polish brush and hammer everything yourself or you can make a custom brush to do that. Um, so we're going to use as our starting point, we're going to use the, and I lost it for some reason. Okay. Um, don't know why it renamed my standard brush to button, but okay. I'll have to look into that maybe. Hmm. Anyways, I'm going to go to my uh, standard brush and I'm going to say drag rectangle and then I'm going to use this alpha that's um, a cellular uh, map that I rendered in uh, using 3ds Max and then I uh, made a circle, a black circle around it to alpha out the uh, exterior. So you can make these in, uh, you can make these in any uh, software you need. So we're going to use this and we are going to lower the intensity and now I need to put my focal shift back and now maybe increase the intensity. Now we can just hammer our surface. And save a lot of time. So you can mess with the intensity. You can always smooth things out and there we've made a utilitarian brush something that uh, you can you could uh, you could spend hours uh, hitting the surface with your hard uh, polish brush maybe with an alpha to give it a sh the shape of the hammer you could do that or you could save time and make I spent maybe five minutes uh, inside 3ds max and photoshop to make this alpha and i can save hours and every time i uh want to redo this kind of surface i can i can just go and save as and call it uh hammer time because dad joke <laughs> Like so. So if we close ZBrush Core, and start it again. Oops, wrong screen. Yeah. So if we start ZBrush Core, our standard brush is back to being called standard again. Our, our buttons brush still there. And if we want, we can load hammer time and they're available to us with that alpha already saved in. When you use Alt, it looks like a, a bubble surface. Like so. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't have anything more to add. So you can make custom brushes. Um, you can um, start using any of the default brushes. Um, you can't add 
to my knowledge, you can't add uh, meshes to the insert mesh uh, brushes. So you can't uh, you can't change those. But uh, all those clay, damn hard polish, inflate, and then you can always go to your um, brush palette. You have a bit of modifiers like back, back face masking, or you can tweak uh, you can tweak your strokes. Uh, you have a bit of control on the lazy mouse but essentially yeah you have your uh the sh the way you can modify your stroke your alpha and the built-in settings uh, from all the standard brushes so use those as your starting point and then you can modify them with alphas to get the effect you want and save some time and Feel free if you uh, make uh, if you make custom brushes, uh, since there aren't a lot of uh, custom brushes available for Zebra Squirrel. So feel free to share them uh, in the comments for uh, others to uh, to pick and um, and use them, and so that way we can all enjoy a library of custom brushes made by you. Uh, I'll probably share this. Um, hammered uh, hammered brush might be useful to someone as a starting point uh, so yeah there here you go this is how you make and use custom brushes uh, roughly into um, in inside ZBrush core so that's about it for this video I'll see you guys in another one and until then have a great time